everybody, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts. Welcome back to my craft room. This week we have another episode of fun with hexies, working with hexies, English paper peeping, bigger peepa peepa peeping. English paper peeping. Boy, that is a hard one. English paper piecing hexies. Whatever you want to call it, we're working with hexies again. If you've missed any of the other videos where I've shown how I work with hexes. Go ahead and check the little i card up here and I'll put a link to the playlist I've created for all the hexy videos. Today I thought it'd be fun to bring in my little gator buddy. He's kind of cool. He's the way they created him. He's kind of like ribbed and he can slither and move around everywhere. I was dusting in the living room and he sits in front of our TV all the time, but I thought I'd bring him in and be part of our mascot here in the craft room. Okay, enough playing with the toys. Let's play with the fabric. I have my matching red, white, and blue bag that I'm using to store all my hexes in. I have a few of the flowers that I've already made. And since I'm getting ready to put everything together inside my bag, just to let you know how I organize things, I tend to organize them different for every project. For, for this one, I've been using some of the blue, so these will probably both go mixed into the same bag. But I just separated them out by fabric, so each fabric is in its, you know, it's not all mixed up. Because while I don't really care too much about my fabric placement, my goal ultimately is not to have two of the same fabrics in a flower. Will it happen? Oh, I'm sure it will. But my goal is not to do it on purpose. And then I have my white ones. I have all the different white ones in here. I'm just reaching my hand in, grabbing a few out. and Because white is white. Some are plain, some are patterned, different patterns. But ultimately, it's white, so I don't really care. And then as I pull my papers out, because... When I stitch everything around the center one, I go ahead and take the paper out and put it in here. See how I've taken it out of the centers? And then because like I said, I reuse these freezer paper ones. Part of the um, playlist up top, you'll see how I do my freezer paper pieces. Oh yeah, tongue tying today. And I even made the inside white. So isn't that perfect how it matches the project? Sometimes it's fun to use a bag that matches a project. Other times, I just use a Ziploc bag. And then I have my little case. This was some type of medical device hubby got for something or another, I don't know. But I keep my threads and I have some extra needles and my scissors in here. I'm not sure if we discussed it before, but with the white ones, with the colored hexes, I use whatever color thread I happen to have at the moment. I believe some of them even have bright yellow on it. But with the white, I wanted to go with white thread. So after I pull the papers out, just in case it showed through, I didn't want to see a neon green popping through my white. Now I got a little started already on this. I had a little head start ahead of everyone. But what we're doing this week is I'm adding the white trails to go around my red white uh, my red and blue hexy flowers so like the next one i'd have to play with it to see exactly how they go because you have to you still have to have a white in between yeah something like that so that's how it's going to end up going and then there'll be more whites that go up and around in all these different areas at this moment i'm considering this the bottom of I think I'm only going to do a wall hanging size. I really don't need a large quilt like this, but it would be nice to have a small wall hanging for the 4th of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day, some, you know, the different American holidays like that. You can, of course, you know, you're making your project. Use any colors you want. Use all one color. Use two colors. You know, match it for your country or your state or your personal preferences or whatever. You know, this is just what I'm using right now. January is really big in allergy season down here for us in Florida. So I've been having a hard time seeing the holes in my needles and getting it to thread. So let's see if I can actually thread this on camera. 
Look at that. Maybe I should try to do it on camera more often. I was having the hardest time. Now remember what I said before? Normally when I'm basting it, I do an arm's length of thread. But when I'm doing each little section, I like to go a little bit shorter because these threads are what are actually holding it together. And the more you pull it through the fabric, and if it rubs up against either your plastic or your cardboard or your paper, um, your little inserts inside, your templates, it, it's going to fray the thread and it's going to weaken it. So I really just use a short one. Plus, you're not going to tangle as much. I like to have a decent sized knot for the back. And I have my thimble. As you can see, when I put this row of white on, I only stitched it to the actual outside of the red and blue flower. I didn't stitch each section down yet. And when I got down to here, I went ahead and I added this flower on and I stitched. What I ended up doing is, since it was part on here, I stitched it from here to here. And then I started a new thread and I stitched it up along here and that way. You can do whatever you want. I was just trying to figure out what was going to be the easiest way to, me to get the pieces together so I can see the design. And I wanted to do the longest line I can do without having to start a new thread. So when I go to put this on over here, then I'll go ahead and stitch down and then I'll stitch in around that way. So just to show you how I do the stitching, Let's just randomly pick a spot. Let's stitch this section right here. So I know those two to go together, so I'm just gonna fold it up and over. Now, these cardboard ones I have in here aren't too bad. But when I was first trying out the cardboard ones, I had some i gotten these advertisements in the mail and these are pretty sturdy. They're pretty firm and thick. And I found that when I went to go, see I popped it out of several of these because when I went to sew different seams and I had to bend the hexi, there, this was, you know, it's you can bend it, of course it's cardboard, but it's very stiff and it's very firm to bend. So I ended up pulling these out but they're all basted nice and secure. And it's not like I pulled it out of all of them. I just pulled it out of the ones that I'm currently working on and that were actually in my way. But these are really thin cardboard, so these were okay. And this is still the um, freezer paper and that just bends easily. So even though I have the white here, I'm still using the blue thread if you get up really close, you might be able to see some of the shadows from the blue thread on the white, but overall it's not too bad. And once I actually quilt this project, I'm not really sure it's going to be that noticeable at all, and it's not going to bother me. So I have the blue thread that I'm working with, my needle, uh, my needle of choice. This one's nice and firm. It doesn't bend easily. It's a very sharp point. It's got a small to medium size eye, which could be a little difficult, but they do have tools to help you thread your needle. I'm going to start in this corner and for no other reason than I just want to work outwards. There's no other, I could put more whites up here. Yeah, so if I go this way, I can choose to put another white right here and then I can keep following that line. But I'm doing it this way no other than I tend to like to go from the inside to the outside. You're putting knots, I put knots at the beginning and the end of each corner anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I can cut my thread at any spot. So you've seen me do this, a, a, I want to say a hundred times, but you've seen me do this several times. I just let my knot secure it. And I try to go in the, very close to the same spot and I run it over twice to secure it. That's just a little knot to put in my thread there. Now that's secured my corner. Now, one of the things I realized, I don't think I mentioned that I like to keep my stitches tight and small to each other. And I do, these are the one inch hexes. So they're one inches from here to here, two inches all the way across this way. We measure it in the quilting world this way, one inch. 
scrapbookers measure it the other way but I like to put about 12 to 15 stitches from corner to corner it depends on what time of the day it is how well my eyes are working some days um, your mood will always affect whatever it is you're doing in life even if you're just stitching and stuff so sometimes I might hold things a little tighter and I might put them a little closer together but I like to put them really close to each other remember I'm holding I'm using this finger here to rest my needle on so I'm not going way down into the back here and I'm using my thumb here to hold the fabric down and also to stop me from going too far into the hexi I like to put a knot just one you go through the circle once the loop once just put a knot halfway through I mean it's only a one inch section and you have knots on both ends so you don't have to I just tend to be a paranoid knotty person and I like to tie a knot partly through anything that I'm stitching just in case the thread breaks or whatever you have to back up a little like I said this is the uh, grandmother's flower garden this is the basic simple back from the 30s and before old time uh, hexagon pattern that people used to make by hand if you go on to Pinterest and you look up hexagon projects or hexagon quilts you'll see all kinds of fun different designs that you can do with a hexagon if this isn't your cup of tea okay, so if you decide you want to have them all in a row and then you just put the next row right on top of that in the little valleys you don't have to actually do the flowers they also have them um, the ones that I really like they kind of look some of them are like this and they just I don't know some different designs some of them put another round before they get to the garden path the white part that goes all around it so their flower would be one two three circles around and there's just there's just lots and lots of random different ways you can do it like I said if you just go onto Pinterest you can find all different kinds of designs and different shapes and sizes and they don't even have to all be hexes some of them mix other shapes in with them like triangles and half hexes and other shapes that I don't know the names of But get yourself something to drink, a coffee or a tea or soda or something, because once you get onto Pinterest, if you've ever been there, you know you're going to be there for hours. But anyway, so okay, so I just go through little stitches. Just grab in two or three threads from each piece of the hexi fabric. And I want to get to the end, I go ahead and I double through that loop also if you google hexagon coloring pages you can print out a coloring page of just blank hexagons and then you can color each section in and decide where you want to have your different designs I saw one oh, several years ago probably about eight years ago uh, this lady was making a dragon all out of hexagons these little teeny teeny tiny inch like I said these sizes are a half inch her I mean an inch hers were either a half inch or a quarter inch they were so tiny and she made a big like basically a pixelated picture from it it was gorgeous so you can make words you can make pictures just print out that little coloring page get yourself some crayons or a colored pencil and just have fun with it you can design something easily and that way when you sit down to do the different paths or the designs you have a master plan to go for you'll have a master plan to go from now otherwise you can just go crazy and like I said you can just take these even as flowers and you can just boy the colors want to stay together and you can just stitch them all together like that you don't have to do a garden path at all because the original grandmother's flower garden is you had all the different color flowers there was like all the centers were yellow whatever color you chose and then they had all the petals would be the same thing like these are all blue 
or they might be all the same fabric and each flower would be different. Then they would take the second round to make it a nice big flower and then they would take a garden path of green to show the grass through the garden, hence the grandmother's flower garden. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if anyone is actually working on a hexagon project before I started these tutorials or since, go ahead and let me know. I'd love to see what you're working on and hear about your project. And that's really all it is to do with the hexagons. The only thing left is popping out the pieces in the back and I can show you easily how to do that. Now remember what I said is you never want to take, not that you never, it's best to leave the papers or the templates in until all um, six sides have been stitched on. As I explained, I couldn't work with my pieces with the cardboard in, so I did pull them out. I tried to treat these corners very gently because they're only basted. But if you go ahead, you can iron them. You can go put a little starch on them, and they will stay as long as you're not just rough handling them and letting the kids and dogs play with them. Now these pieces... Anything that's going to be stiff, like your plastic templates, they will have a hole punched in the center. And these cardboard ones tend to be a little bit harder to get out, so you punch a hole in the center. You can take um, a wooden pencil that hasn't been sharpened, a knitting needle, a crochet hook. I can take the tip of my scissors. I just need to be very careful that I don't punch through the fabric. You just go in the hole. I just peel it back a little. And see, since we didn't stitch through them, when we basted it, it pops right out. If we'd have done the basting to where the thread goes through all the way through on the outside, we would have to trim all that thread out, pull it all out, and then we could remove our pieces. Now the freezer paper, let me move my pin so I don't stab myself. The freezer paper pieces come out real easy. I just kind of stick my finger in there. I, I reach for the edge and see they just pull right out. Sometimes you'll see little notches on the edge where I'll have nicked the paper while stitching them together. But just give it a little tug and it'll come out. If you were using glue, you might have to take the tip of your scissors or your finger or something and just gently unglue the fabric from whatever you glued it to. Or just pull up each piece with your fingers because you won't have this thread here. This thread stopping me from pulling it up too far. You won't have thread. You'll still be glue. So you'll be able to pull it all the way back and then just pull your piece out. Once it's all to a certain situation and you, if it's getting a little too messy for you, you can always hit it with an iron. But that's about it for the hexes. That's how I take care of those. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them down below. And the next time we see this project, I'll try to work on it so we can go ahead and see how to quilt it. But that's it for me. You guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.